Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you um, a character rig and uh, we're going to be using Max for Maya for this. So um, I'm going to show you two ways to open this and um, first I'll just show you you already know how to do the file open uh, so you just go file open scene and then just click on here and go open and don't save and continue and it's going to contain mental array nodes because it's created in an older version of Maya just click OK and then you get the other pop-up that says errors have occurred while reading the scene click OK it's totally fine everything's good to go and we're ready to begin uh, messing around with it but now I actually want to show you the proper way uh, to import character rigs so um, a lot of people really don't know this um, that I've noticed anyway so um, it took me a while to figure out also and um, the way you do this is you actually the proper way is to go to file and then go to your reference editor and in here um, we don't have anything in here yet but we're gonna go file and create reference and then we're gonna locate our file and click reference it's gonna say it's a student version okay continue file contains mental ray nodes okay continue frame mismatch everything's fine don't worry about all of that because we're not getting that technical into it um, and then just click OK and now we have our file being referenced so similar to like um, Adobe Premiere which we were just using um, you're referencing your video file in this case our character rig from a separate file and um, basically the the reason that's good in this case for um, Autodesk Maya is when you're animating with this and let's just say it's a rig in process you can go back into your original file and let's just say you wanted to update the uh, skin weights um, nothing we really have touched base on yet that's more of 3D modeling too um, however uh, the the way the character deforms could be adjusted so if you have like vertices popping out in areas you don't want you can go back to the original edit that file and then come back to this one with all your animation on it and it'll be updated right away which is totally awesome um, so you don't have to sort of painstakingly go through this with all that animation in there paint the skin weight start editing the rig it, it just gets kinda difficult especially when you have so many keyframes set so um, that's one major reason why the reference editor is absolutely fantastic so we're really just sort of pulling this file in here um, where you can still make adjustments in the other file and everything will sort of update automatically in this one um, pending your adjustments so anyway um, I thought that was a really neat thing when I first learned it because um, I had spent um, I don't know probably like two years before I even knew uh, that you could just reference in a file um, anyway that is uh, technically the proper way to um, import a rig and uh, animate with so um, anyway and that way it allows your character riggers if you're working in a studio environment uh, to make adjustments to it just send you the, the file and then you can reference it from there um, with all your animation already set on it and it'll update uh, accordingly to any new controllers or whatever so uh, it's a really useful uh, thing to use so anyway now we're with this uh, Max for Maya character and you'll notice that um, I'm just gonna change this to legacy default you'll notice that uh, he has a bunch of uh, little controllers around them similar to the bouncing ball except in this case it's a character so um, like the bouncing ball each one of these controllers does something different so I've already set it up so it's similar or really easy to use um, at least learn from um, because there are additional things in here that you can adjust to 
get a little bit more technical where uh, right now the arms are set up for FK which stands for forward kinematics and the legs are set up for IK which is inverse kinematics so basically what that means is forward kinematics you're pushing forward for every controller okay and with IK we have the leg here and if I were to grab the waist you'll notice I can bend the waist without having to then later bend the knee and then after that you know bend the ankle so it works inverse so you can control here where this will animate uh, automatically for you which is super useful especially for uh, a biped character such as this where biped meaning uh, two legs um, where this character uh, can keep its foot planted but you can sort of wiggle the hips or move the hips in all different directions and the knee joint and ankle joint will correspond with it but also while keeping the foot planted in the other way with FK I would have to go ahead and rotate uh, by rotating the arm up here I would later have to sort of bend my elbow back into place and my wrist to match the floor plane and believe me if you were kinda of doing that with uh, the legs animating it would get extremely difficult uh, to make it look right because uh, your feet would constantly be sliding around and we call that ice skating in animation um, so anyway now let's get uh, go ahead and start uh, explaining sort of what controls this rig has. So um, I guess since I've already started with the arms, I'll continue with the arms. So again, you can rotate the shoulder in any direction. I it will allow you to do stretch. I would recommend staying off of this. Um, I think it's I think it can be extremely useful, especially in like a cartoony cartoony environment. Um, like a Looney Tunes kind of thing or if you think of like Space Jam where Michael Jordan's stretching his arm to go dunk the ball across uh, half court um, so anyway in that case yeah it could be really useful but for the purpose of this lab stay away from using the stretchy arms it's uh, unless you absolutely need to but you shouldn't um, so I can rotate the shoulder then I can rotate the elbow then I can rotate the wrist then I can rotate the fingers and you'll notice that they actually when you're rotating it from here it will rotate all joints in the finger simultaneously now if you wanted to get a little fancy with it you have on the finger control you have the fingertip where you can just bend the fingertip and I'm using I just click on this control and then I click on my middle mouse button click in the scene and it allows me to just slide and adjust it accordingly when you do something like this and your joint is bending backwards that is known as breaking the joints in animation uh, a, a nifty little term um, that is used quite often especially for like overlapping action and, and stuff like that so um, then we have uh, the middle finger the finger base the spread so you can spread the fingers across you have a stretch feature which really does a it works okay to a certain extent um, and then I don't know I'm just gonna leave that at one um, I'm not sure which what this controls it could be amount of stretch possibly and actually I think that's if I turn it on yeah so um, it controls the amount of stretch that we have um, okay so same thing with all of these and that's about it with that now I'm just gonna go ahead and set these all back to zero and now we also have this one this is known as the uh, clavicle control so clavicle shoulder elbow wrist and then your finger controls including your thumb so our clavicle allows us to
basically uh, your trapezius here, it'll allow you to sort of move this area around. Um, and this one is also good to sometimes move around like this. So um, because of deformation in the model, if I do, depending on the topology of your model, it can get um, in cases where this can be extremely useful. And you'll notice where the controller is located. It's located inside of the mesh, the pivot point, and that's because that's the location of the joint controlling this. So um, just bear that in mind. This will be centered on the shoulder joint. This will be centered on the elbow joint. This will be centered on the wrist joint. And that's uh, true pretty much for every single controller on here, uh, according to the joint that it's on. So same, same exact thing for the other side. Uh, these are the right side controllers. Um, and you'll see it says FKR control. So forward shoulder, forward kinematics, right controller. So um, that will be clavicle L control. Shoulder FK left control. That's what that stands for. Um, I guess I'll start pushing down and I'll come to the face last. So now we have our spine controllers, or torso in this matter, it's named. And you can go ahead and rotate your character accordingly. Also, same thing here. And it doesn't look like you can use the uh, move tool on these controllers, but we can use the rotate. This is our root control. Now this is pretty much one of the most important controls on this entire thing because all joints actually come into place at this point. So the joints from the feet are coming up towards here and the joints from here are coming down towards here. Just a little uh, side note. Then we have our hip controller. So this is just going to adjust the hips. Uh, maybe a little salsa dancing, this could come into play. Um, then we have our knee controllers, and these might not be as, you can notice the entire leg twisting, but if I bring this down, you'll notice now I can bend my knee in whichever direction I'd like, which is really neat. And then we have our foot controller. So our foot controller here, we have our, uh, you can basically move it however you'd like, okay, right? You can rotate it. And then you can also use these extra controllers, such as the ball roll, meaning um, if I middle mouse button click in here with it selected, it's going to bend at the, uh, the ball joint here in your foot. So if you want to go on your tippy toes, for instance. Uh, the toe heel roll. So this is where just the heel is sort of rotating upward, um, but the toes are staying pointed towards the ground. The toe bend. So if you're just going to bend your toes a little bit there. Um, and I'm just using my middle mouse button click in the scene once I highlight this. The ball twist. So basically um, twisting his foot on the ground. Maybe putting out a flame or something. The toe twist. So this is just uh, a different location for it to twist from. And then the bank controller. So is uh, he can go on the sides of his feet if needed. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm going to keep everything. I'm not going to, this is, we know is the stretch. This is, uh, or controls some type of stretch here. This is an auto stretch feature, which I'm, I'm not sure about the joint scale. I wouldn't touch, um, because you'll see you get some really wonky things here. Uh, no bend. And that might be turning on IK or FK. Yeah, you'll see his leg gets stays straight where the other one doesn't. And um, and then parent world. This is a drop down, but I would just keep it at world. If we switch it to hip, let's see what happens real quick. Yeah, so that's how you switch it from IK to FK from here to world. Okay, so um, those are all the foot controllers, obviously the same thing for the other side, 
And now I will go up here and start getting into the face. I'll start with the eyes. I'll select both simultaneously and you can just rotate the eyes in any direction you'd like. And the thing, the neat thing about this one is that you actually notice the eyelid animating a little bit with it. Okay, and you can obviously do one at a time. Right, so you can get some silly expressions out of them. And then we'll go, I'll start over here where the jaw is. And these are all gonna be using your translate tool and you can just sort of animate them around. There's his jaw, and you can see it sort of represents how it animates. Now, if I tap spacebar, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out here. They uh, include, I believe, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more so we can see the entire thing. Um, if I go into my panels and perspective, and I go into this Max for my uh, facial cam, you'll notice no matter what, wherever I rotate this character in scene, this camera stays locked directly on his face. So this is where you would, um, you can't zoom in or zoom out, which is kind of unfortunate on it because it's locked, but it allows you to sort of get a good uh, look at what his face would look like no matter how his body's twisting. So if you were animating in perspective and you had your, your character, uh, and this is the head control, um, you know, looking this way, you wouldn't have to start to rotate around and then start messing around with it. You could just start playing around with the controllers and start animating his uh, facial controls. So anyway, that being said, um, you could also do a panels layouts and do two uh, two panes side by side. Panels, uh, panel, nope, layouts. And then do, 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 do two, two panes side by side. And then if you wanted to switch this to your perspective or if your cameras didn't automatically do this by default, um, you could go ahead and do this. You can go into, if you wanted this to be your orthographic, front, side, top, or your perspective, obviously our perspective camera. Or you could switch if you had created any new cameras to any new cameras that you create in the scene. So. Um, Anyway, I'm going to stick with, uh, I'll stick in the side by side for now um, so you can get a good look here. And I'll switch this to legacy default. And I'll begin to uh, start playing around with some of these controllers. Because I can't zoom in or out of the, the uh, facial cam, um, I'm going to need to kind of just keep using the controllers, at least some of them, in this viewport. Um, but let's go ahead and just mess around. So again, in this jaw controller, you'll see it's sort of the sub controller, and this controls the uh, bite of him. So you could have an overbite or an underbite. And then we have our cheeks controller, where he becomes, you know, like a blowfish kind of, or the duck face. Then we have the tongue, so I'm going to need to open the mouth for this. You have the tongue controller right here. And you'll see that his tongue animates directly with this. Now we have the narrow wide. So you'll see, you can see without the wireframe on here and with wireframe on here, what's happening with the topology and what it looks like. So you can sort of see where he stretches his face out or brings his uh, uh, mouth inward or outward. And you can do it for one side or the other side or directly in the middle. Okay. Um, now we have the smile controller. Smile or frown. So this will be the left side. This is the right side. And then in the middle will be both sides. We have our lips which animate from side to side here. Then we have our lips here that kind of do this. This is good for lip sync. So this would be like probably like an MBP or F or something. Um, the lips come out a little bit. M like mm, um, stuff like that. So you can get some really silly uh, expressions out of them. Lips up. 
so you can get this snarl or whatever you want to call it uh, then we have the lips down same thing just just the bottom lip then just making sure I didn't miss anyone all right um, then we have the gur gur so we have the gur face um, and you can do that for the left and or the right and now we will get into the eyebrows where you can cast a ton of expression with and you can see you have this little one controls the center one controls the outer part of it and one controls the inner part of it so if you want them to get looking really I don't know angry or something you can get some really weird stuff on there um, and you can also for the other side you can also move all of them simultaneously as well and now finally we are going to get to the pupil and we can make it really small or really large and you can get a lot of goofy looks with that as well and then we have the blink so this will be the top blink or the top eyelid okay and then we also have the bottom eyelid all right so you can get them to do some type of squint or something oh or close his eyes here or do a squint right so you can get a lot of different things and it's, when you start combining all of these things you can get a lot of expression out of this character super great rig especially to learn on so um, with that being said I'll start to show you how to uh, get into creating some pose to pose um, so there's two types of animation there's pose to pose and then there's also uh, straight ahead uh, pose to pose is really one of the most common ways that animators animate today um, while that takes on the practice of creating a pose we'll start to create one on frame one right here so we'll keep frame one going and let me go ahead and bring myself out of the picture for a second so now I've got my you can see my timeline and from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, on my first frame I'm just gonna go ahead and start to animate them um, so I'll think of a uh, an expression such as uh, angry happy sad uh, joyful um, these are all things that animators need to keep in their the back of their mind um, while creating animations to really engage uh, their character and and pull that emotion out of the character to uh, the viewer or audience whomever is watching it so they can really get a feel for what this character is feeling um, so now uh, with that being said I typically go to the um, face last because I think the body is um, always really um, important to kind of do first in my personal opinion um, because I feel like in that certain body posture and gesture um, will really uh, sort of e evoke whatever facial feeling he's having so if he's um, uh, in pain and you know he's he's kneeling or something it, it'll it'll uh, really help um, the animator sort of mess around with it so anyway um, the first controller I always like to do are uh, is the uh, hit, uh, root controller and because nobody stands like this like literally you're not gonna see someone standing both knees locked joints in um, standing uh, just like that so we we actually animate our in in real life we um, use our hips so often this this root movement for all types of things so I'm gonna start by uh, I gotta think of a posture I want this guy to be in so um, how about a uh, uh, 
joyful, or I don't know, joyful or angry. Um, let's do like angry slash upset, okay? So um, I think if he's angry slash upset, he's going to have his head down, maybe his eyes looking forward, and he's already starting to get this body motion of like, Hey, or a sternful look at the moment, um, like, hey, I'm looking for you, looking at you, I'm upset with you, like, right now I feel like he's saying, or just by his body posture, not including his arms, just the, the head down and slightly sort of slouched in a way, um, just like, seriously, something like that, um, anyway, I'm gonna keep pushing forward, and I have barely even uh, done anything with this and um, again as I begin to create this I, I don't have to worry about it yet because I uh, haven't set any keyframes but I'm gonna actually uh, when I'm done with this create I'm gonna create my um, my pose here and then when I'm done with it Maybe even bring this a little bit forward. Maybe even something like that. And um, things to remember with hand uh, hand animation. Um, you really want to have like these unique hand expressions. So. Um, you could have both of them be the the same, but that's called twinning, and it's it's not it's it's really not the best thing to do where you have the character sort of doing one thing on one side and the exact thing on the other side. And we really express so much through our hands. I mean, we even talk with our hands at times, um, uh, excluding sign language. You literally could talk with your hands, but. Um, just your hands in general and your hand movements can really uh, show a lot um, in your um, expression. All right, so um, I'm just going to keep kind of playing around with this until I get something that looks right. And I'm actually, I mean, we're going to be animating uh, this from pose to pose. However, um, what uh, what I'm actually kind of doing right now, in a way, is a straight ahead act, uh, straight ahead, because I, I really don't know at the moment. I'm kind of just winging this. Um, And what you want to remember is that, um, and I can turn shading and wireframe on shaded off. What you want to remember is that um, when you're doing this, you want to animate pretty much every controller that you have. And what I'm doing is more of his weight is holding up on this side. So 
So I'm having them sort of lean this way. And I'm just kind of going through and trying to include my um, line of action also so it's really hard to do because I'm not I don't have a set camera but if I did I'd probably be doing something like this or if he was really really angry he'd probably even be more like this something like that so I'm gonna kinda get this line of action this way. But since I don't have a set camera that I'm animating from, I'm going to just kind of go from like a three-fourths perspective, something like this. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way he's looking, I'm, so I'm going to go with that. And now what I'll do is I'm going to start to give him the eyes are super important um, I'll just leave those normal And <laughs> just like so. I'll keep this at zero. And once I'm done with this one pose, um, smile, frown. Once I'm done with this one pose, I'm going to just set a uh, uh, what is it called? A quick select set for all of the controllers. And now I'll think, I'll just do the eyebrows now. So 
So he's a little bit angry here. And let's bring his head down just a little bit more. Take these eyes. This is a little angry here. And you can sort of tell with his body posture pushing forward. Um, and let's just say you're totally happy with this. And then I can also something like so. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a quick select set. So basically, I'm just going to select every single controller he has when I'm finally pleased with the pose. Oh, I even have his neck control I forgot, and there is his head control. Right, and now from here on my custom shelf, create, set, quick select, set, and I'm just going to type max all, and that's for on my custom shelf add to shelf and now I'm gonna tap S on my keyboard but also now when I go to frame 12 I can click on max all and adjust him and I'm gonna just do a quick little one just to throw him into a totally different per, uh, sort of look and I'm not really thinking this out at all I'm just sorta of playing around with it Okay, so when I'm done with this one last one, just to give it, just so you can see something happening in here, uh, when we create our play blast. I'll show you how we create animation. And that's good for now. Um, so I'm going to just go with this. All right? And let me bring this foot back because his body's a little off center here. see what his neck does here because I haven't used his neck at all all right so that's good enough so on frame 12 now I'm going to select my max all button and press s and now when I play it back I'll just do 12 frames to show you I'm going to click on play and now I've got two frames of animation here so 
he goes from the stern look looking forward to oh my god what's up there um anyway so now that i've got that i want you to do five different poses and um five different poses at 12 frames is uh what 60 frames so 1 12 24 36 48 60 so maybe 48 1 12 24 36 48 so 48 if you want to do 60 frames great um, but anyway so just for purposes of this I only have 12 frames it's just gonna I'll be able to show you more quickly at 12 frames um, I'm gonna right click on my play button and on under this play bit play blast uh, button here I'm gonna click on the square and do settings and this is gonna pop open my play blast options and um, format AVI is totally fine for this. I would bring down uh, display size from window. I would bring the scale down uh, to 0.5, so that basically means 50%. Um, you can even bring it down even more. Quality, you can even bring this down. I'm going to bring it down to 50. Um, remove temporary files. Save to file, and I'm going to go to browse. And then in here, I'm going to locate where I want to place my file and I'm just going to call this max play blast example and from here I'll hit click on save and now it's going to save that movie file my AVI file uh, to this and you, you, we have image or AVI I stick with AVI and um, after that, you should be good to go and just click Play Blast. You'll see it runs through and it's going to come up and uh, it automatically opened in my AVI player, uh, Windows Media Player. And when I click Play, you'll see. You'll see it's not as high quality of image because I wanted to uh, make this uh, a lower quality so it rendered quickly. Um, but this is how you can go ahead and it's going to just uh, sort of. Uh, display what you see so in the viewport so you see the perspective viewport here it's going to just play that um, anyway um, that's all I've got for you in this video um, and you can always locate this where you save the file to um, but if you do have any questions make sure you come up with five different poses with five different emotions um, and don't forget to set keyframes when you uh, need to that's where that quick select set button comes into uh, play so before scrubbing frames make sure you set a keyframe because otherwise you're gonna lose everything you sort of just worked on um, so always remember press S on your keyboard to set keyframe um, and that's where you can quickly just set all of your keyframes if you forgot that to like um, if you forgot if, if you you know bent any other joints or rotated any other or uh, controllers um, by clicking on that quick uh, quick select on all you know max for all or whatever max for Maya but we named the quick select button uh, max all for select all um, you can just set a keyframe every time so let let me just show you really quickly what I mean by that before I close this video out so if I were to go on frame 18 and let's just say I started to animate him uh, and whatever right and do all this fancy stuff and I forgot to set a keyframe right and I totally just slipped my mind I was like alright this pose is great I'm ready to go to the next one wait what just happened let me undo that you can't undo it because you never set the keyframe so make sure you set the keyframe otherwise you're gonna sort of lose your pose to pose and that's where this button uh, the quick select set really comes in handy. Anyway, um, if you do have any questions for me, uh, shoot me a message. Um, and I hope you uh, have fun with this character rig. Thanks for watching.